In the months of peace, following the conquest of Tyros, Robert Baratheon's dragon hunt started to look and act like a proper kingdom. The city of Myr served as its new capital, and it was welcoming a large influx of people from Westeros. Workers and families, septons and soldiers, merchants and artisans were streaming into the depopulated city after making the short trip from the Stormlands or Crownlands, and soon the common tongue replaced the Mirish Valyrian dialect as a language on the street. Robert didn't spend much time in his new city, instead preferring to hunt game, train soldiers, or visit one of his many mistresses. Instead his hand, Ned Stark, mostly held court in the partially rebuilt Prince's Palace. The new prestige of the dragon hunt also attracted more noble visitors. On the recommendation of Brynden Blackfish Tully and his sister Liza, Robert's wife, Ned invited Lothar Frey to Myr. The Tullys knew Lothar the Lame as the steward to Walder Frey, the Lord of the Twins, and had praised the man as a competent and shrewd administrator. They had also insinuated that the ambitious Lothar was not necessarily happy with his current position. Ned gave him another option, a powerful position in a realm triple the size of the Twins and controlling many times its population, on the Regency Council of a largely absent ruler. The deal was soon struck, and Lothar the Lame would serve the Dragon Hunt capably in various capacities for many years. His skill for intrigue and subterfuge, something which did not come naturally to either Robert or Ned, would be especially appreciated. Despite Robert's infidelity, he did not neglect his new wife Lysa, and she bore him many children. Willem, his bastard with Mage Mormont, was soon followed by a true-born daughter, Eliana, and a year later by twins, a girl, Jena, and a boy, Stefan, Robert's true-born son and heir. Ned Stark and Jerry and Lannister immediately went looking for betrothal options, and they set their sights high. The daughter of Lord Paramount Mace Tyrell of the Reach, Marjorie Tyrell, was a clever and pretty girl of seven. Marrying her would not only give the dragon hunt a significant boost in legitimacy, but would also secure an alliance with the second most powerful man in the Seven Kingdoms. Lord Mace required much cajoling and many an expensive gift, but eventually he was convinced of the benefits of marrying into the Baratheon family and allying himself with a man controlling a veteran army nearly the size of Dorne's. Marjorie and Stefan were betrothed, though it would be many years before the marriage was consummated. Unrest in Westeros continued. Balon Greyjoy, as yet unaware of the plans of his brother Euron to overthrow him, decided to make a bid for independence, while King Stannis was calling his banners to subjugate Glendon Butler, the peasant lord of Storm's End. In true boneheaded, ironborn fashion, he went on the attack. While Stannis was distracted, the Iron Fleet sailed around the continent, laying siege to King's Landing itself. Climbing its walls at night, a small contingent of Ironborn managed to capture one of the city's gatehouses, and soon the gate was opened and thousands of Ironborn poured into the city. The sack was brutal, and though King Stannis escaped, Lord Balon took Queen Cersei Lannister as his salt wife, and kidnapped the princes Daemon and Michael. In the north, Brandon Stark, crippled Lord of Winterfell, made a similar bid to regain his Wardenship of the North, which Stannis had entrusted to the Riswells instead. Eventually, Brandon was successful, and the Starks regained their traditional rulership over the North. King Stannis accepted the new situation as a fait accompli, though he did demand fealty, which Lord Paramount Brandon readily gave. However, Brandon still suffered many health problems, and many remarked on how he moved and talked like an old man, despite having yet to reach his 30th name day. Eventually these problems overcame the Lord of Winterfell, and he died in his sleep, leaving the realm to the youngest of Rickard Stark's sons, Benjen. Ned, having long since accepted that he was not welcome in the north, sent a raven to Winterfell congratulating his young brother. He received no reply. But it wasn't like Ned wasn't needed in Myr. After a blissful period of peace and reconstruction, Robert barged into the halls of the Prince's Palace. It's time to get off our asses and continue this dragon hunt, before that murderer Rhaegar tries something funny again. Lys is next. Tully, Ned, I now command an army larger than when I was still Lord of the Stormlands. Let's use it. With that, the third of the Daughters' Wars began. By now the dragon hunt outnumbered Lys, which had only recently suffered a major revolt by at least four to one, and through their conquest of Tyrosh, 
The Westerosi also commanded a large fleet. The decadent Lyceni stood no chance. It wasn't long until the yellow banners with the pierced red dragon waved on top of the walls of Lys. All three daughters, Tyros, Myr, and Lys, were now subjugated. And the way was clear for the real prize, Volantis, and the Targaryen refugees it protected. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to JoJo Gaming, and welcome back to episode 4 of the Dragon Hunt. Yes, it is time. It is almost time. Well, it's not quite time. We will have, uh, we will give our, our vessel some rest, but after that, well, we have about 26,000 people in our, uh, 26,000 soldiers in our domain. We have an additional 3,000 here, then we have the Second Sons, who command another... 2100 so that is altogether maybe something like uh, 30,000 something slightly above 30,000 and Mr. Volant is here Ooh, only <laughs> only 8,000 I guess it really fluctuates a lot in this mod I don't know if it's a bug or, or what it is but if he is fully reinforced it will be we will outnumber him although not by a huge amount but uh, I think we can risk it and I think we can go for the anti-Targaryen war, Kingdom of the Reach, Kingdom of the Trident. Yeah, I, I fixed a bug uh, where uh, Rhaegar wasn't his vessel anymore. I, I made him uh, the vessel again, so we can uh, we can once again attack Volantis. So, but that is all for later in this episode. Uh, for now, let's uh, start the game. I suppose I'm just <laughs> I'm very <laughs> uh, very paranoid about uh, forgetting to press record, which has happened like multiple times to me already. <laughs> and then I record a whole episode, and it just uh, doesn't show up. Sam has had fire sword removed from his treasury. All right, all right, my guy. You know, you've taken a loan. How's the war going with Balon? Ninety-nine percent in favor of Balon the Ninth. Well, let's see if he wins. I think, I think Stannis has the upper hand right now. If you look at look here, there are, um, multiple of the Ironborn's castles are in the siege, but ninety-nine percent is a lot. So it might just be do, do it by taking war score or something. So Stannis still has a <laughs> what a beginning to the episode. Your acquaintance, Cersei Lannister, was drowned at age 26 as a sacrifice to the drowned god by Iron King Balon the Ninth. That's just that's just spiteful, man. That lost you war score. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Oh, I guess not. Okay. Let's see what he does to uh to my nephews then. <laughs> Damon and um Michael, who are both well, Michael might not be my nephew because he is blonde of hair. I'm pretty sure this is a... Uh, uh, the, the the son of Jamie and Cersei, <laughs> not of not of, not of Stannis and Cersei, but this uh, little boy has black hair. So this is probably the trueborn son of uh, Stannis, and he is currently imprisoned by Daemon by Balon Greyjoy. So let's see if he survives. We can make him a special interest character. Actually, he's going to be the king of the Iron Throne if all goes uh, all goes right for him. <laughs> what a beginning to the episode, man! So I've been looking for uh, someone for Jamie Lannister to marry uh, for a while now, and I see that uh, Catelyn. We, sh we should have snatched Catelyn Tully because she was, of course, married married to Brandon, and Brandon died last episode uh, under, under suspicious circumstances. But she's now married to Sir John Vance, who is 16 years old, and he wants to join our court. So I figure we might want to do some murder in there because, uh, I mean, the guy, the guy's gay and arbitrary. So I don't know. <laughs> I uh, I think Catelyn Tully uh, maybe wants to marry Jamie, but uh, who, who, who knows? You know, she might she might like uh, John Vance. She might like the peace and quiet. You know, he's gay, so he will probably not spend too much time uh, in the bedroom of his wife. But you know, who knows? He might just keep up appearances. Welcome, Sir John Vance. We have uh, invited you with no ulterior motive at all. At all. <laughs> and Catelyn Tully, my sister-in-law, is here as well. Uh, let's see if we can murder this man. One hundred forty-eight percent. Okay, I think we can. Can we even imprison him, maybe? Did he, did he do something wrong? Nope. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. I think, uh, regardless, we can... Uh, we can probably... Oh, Catelyn Tully herself wants to uh, wants to kill him. Okay, all right. I see how it is. I see how it is, Catelyn. <laughs> I mean, it's the medieval times, right? It's the only way to do uh, to have a divorce. Uh, Captain General Robert of Dragonhunt and Queen Lysa of the Dragonhunt named Oliver. Ah, she takes more after her mother. Oh, and before I forget, actually, uh, William Snow... I dub the, I dub the William Fire. Yes, this was uh, the suggestion of uh, Felix Ebert uh, on YouTube, who said uh, the bastard name should be Fire, and uh, I think the game agrees because this name was already in 
um, in the game files. I didn't even have to add this nickname. It was already there. So Will Willem Fire is my bastard son. Uh, we, we named him Fire because he's growing up in Essos and not in, uh, in the north. Uh, it might not be completely book accurate, but you know, who cares. Um, a mess with arms, Jamie Lannister. Request to allow his jewel, his, ma his, his rifle, Master Rogar. Disallow it and banish the uh, instigator. No, no, no. You, you, you can have a jewel, my man. With a super weak, <laughs> weak man. Minus five personal combat skill. You will murder him, probably. Uh, so we sent the target to investigate rumors of a plot. Maybe he should be silenced. No, I don't care. I don't care. He's informed some kind of magister. That's fine. That's fine. I want 200%. My man, I have 15 gold. I want to kill this man. <laughs> I'm a bit bloodthirsty, but I really want to marry Jamie to Catherine Stark. I want to make all my ships come true, man. <laughs> Kickstand is of the Iron Throne's piece of. Okay, what, what, what happened? Kickstand is lost. OMG. Did Balon Greyjoy really defeat the Iron Throne? That's quite impressive. I mean, this whole island was. Uh, this whole island was, uh, was was occupied almost, but he at least released... Did he release Stannis' sons? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So uh, I guess in exchange for releasing Damon and Michael, uh, he uh, he, and he he was granted independence by Stannis. Who did Stannis marry? Muriel Lannister, the, the daughter of Stafford Lannister. So I guess it's another Lannister. So that at least makes some sense, because <laughs> he married Cersei earlier. Um, who, who, how are you related to Tywin? Okay, you're a very distant family. You're a second cousin to, uh, to, to Tywin already. But still a Lannister. I mean, fair enough. Didn't Tywin get another, another kid in the meantime? I guess not. Tyrion? No, no, he, he didn't. Okay. Who will inherit the Westerlands now, though? Is it Daemon? No, Jamie. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's Agnetic... Okay, I guess Jamie gets preference over Michael. Yeah, that um, that's true. I think yeah, because if 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 uh, that's because Cersei is a woman, so it would, it would go to Jamie first. Alrighty, uh, that's fine. Jamie, uh, we're gonna marry her to uh, gonna marry her to. Uh, <laughs> oh, Fate of the Seventh. Tyrosh has been converted to Fate of the Seventh. Fate. Oh, that's cool. Fate of the Seventh is spreading. We should um, we should have our Maester also uh, our Septon also spread the Fate a little bit. My guy, go to Robert's Landing, spread your faith there. Summer and winter annals have been added to my treasury. All right. Good book for Robert to read. Can we read it? Nope. <laughs> we don't have enough learning, I guess. Yeah, learning equal to or greater or equal to eight. Um, having said that, we might want to... Um, we might want to have Brynden Tully be the guardian of, uh, of my son, Stefan, because Robert is not really a great guardian. On the other hand, eh, we might as well, right? We might as well. Oh, Glendon... Look, Glendon ransomed somebody from the clutches of Stannis. Okay, so he, he did allow this peasant adventurer to keep Storm's End. That is uh, quite a twist, actually. This is the Dondarrion, so this, this is uh, Renly. Renly is, again, Lord of the Stormlands. He, once again, is, has overlordship over uh, over uh, over Storm's End. Stefan Penrose is the High Lord of Storm's End already. Interesting. Interesting. Interesting stuff. William Fire, how will we educate him? Uh, command, right? Best equipment possible? Ah, he's a bastard, right? Mm, yeah, 38 gold. I, th I think I think that's worth it. We will... Should we? Hmm. I think we will have uh, Brynden Tully train you. Or, or Ned Stark, maybe. No, let's do Brynden Tully. Let's do Brynden Tully. Brynden Tully, you can train my uh, my boy. Oh, he's already training my uh, my daughter. I think we will switch my daughter to somebody else. Uh, Lothar Frey? Sure, that's a good a good choice. My wife is pregnant again. <laughs> we already, we had, we already had Oliver. This is, this is, she's already born, born me five children. The poor woman is twenty six years old. She gave me five children. I mean, they're both lustful, so I guess it makes sense. <laughs> Robert likes her. Sure. I mean, it's fa it's fair enough. Oh, we need one more, one more person for the two hundred percent. There we go. We already spent like a hundred gold. Killing this man. It's really not worth it, but... Yes, the roses are, just aren't safe anymore. Come on, kill him. Lord Jerrion sent me a very detailed letter detailing with strategic warfare. Dealing with strategic warfare. Taking examples from his own studies and personal experiences in the field. I'm impressed. I mean, sure. He's an organizer. Come on, kill him. Kill John Vance. Success. Oh, those nasty bandits. Here she is. Kathleen Stark, single again. 
My woman? Why don't you marry Jamie Lannister? Yes, please. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why. <laughs> why we, we bothered with that whole murder just to marry what for us is kind of a random courtier off but hey <laughs> lord jamie and catelyn tell you this is a very cursed match <laughs> if you know what episode i'm in the show that's only in seven seven years though so uh, they, 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 they don't hate each other just yet <laughs> they, they, they didn't do anything to each other <laughs> i mean catelyn is quite pious so i think she probably doesn't like uh jamie being excommunicated and of course he's a kingslayer <laughs> but i think catelyn doesn't mind that quite as much as uh, as her, her ex her alternate timeline husband uh, Ned did so Ned Ned is at my court right so he will meet Catelyn <laughs> I don't know if, if in this alternate reality they will they will hit it off as well but at least Jamie has got a has got a, a wife now and she uh, I think Tywin would approve because I think uh, this gives the Lannisters an alliance with the Riverlands which is something uh, I'm pretty sure they can use to uh, com combat the alliance block of uh, Mace Tyrell who is allied with uh, just me I guess <laughs> so so not that many people, because we because the Lannisters are this this, and uh, the Lannisters are not allied with me, of course, because Jamie is not a family member of mine. So I guess uh, Tywin doesn't mind counteracting the alliance block of the Tyrells and the Dragon Hunt with his own alliance block of the uh, Westerlands and Riverlands. That makes sense. Strategic marriage. I think um, I think Tywin would be pleased. Jeno Slint is here. I don't know why <laughs> why he's at my court, but hey, I think he just suddenly appeared. How is my levy reinforcement going? Oh, 28k already. I think we will crush these, these volant volantines. I hope we can... Um, oh, 22k. Okay, I guess actually it's increasing quite fast. Cameron Baratheon. Good name. Strong boy. <laughs> my seventh... Sixth kid? No, seventh kid. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, no, sixth. Sixth kid. Okay, so the line is secure, it says. Hope you're proud of me. Uh, how is the line of succession? Damon, Michael, Stefan. Okay, so Stefan is third in line to the Iron Throne. That's cool. I think um, I think that that might be our end goal in the end. Once Robert has done his thing, captured and killed all the Targaryens and uh, ruled as a ruler of Essos, and uh, Stefan inherits the throne, he might want to. Uh, he uh, he has no love for his his his, his uh, weak uncle Stannis. You know, he might want to press his claim on the Iron Throne. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Let's see about that, though. That is in the future. So uh, Robert doesn't know about that kind of thing. All right. My vessels like me again. I think it's time. I think it's time. 23,000 Volantine soldiers are ready to fight. And that doesn't include uh, Rhaegar Targaryen's mercenary band, which he will most likely raise. Although I guess he doesn't really have that much money. So maybe not. But we'll see. I think it's time. I, th I, think, I think it's time to grab these Targaryen a-holes. Anti-Targaryen war. This ruler is harboring Targaryens. My dragon hunt will bring those murderers to justice. And I can imprison five Targaryens. Prince Rhaegar of the Iron Throne. Prince Balaeron of Company of the Dragon. Is, um, is Rhaegar no longer the leader of the Company of the Dragon? No, he still is. He still is. Here he is. 30, 30, 34 years old. He's no longer married. Let's do it. Let's do it, boys. I'm gonna do it. Triarch Niesos Vassar, you harboring Targaryens, give them back or face the, quote, consequences. We can even call in the Riverlands and the Reach. Should we do that? No, I don't know. We're not going to do that. We, we, we want to... This is a vendetta between us and Rhaegar, you know. We're going to deal with this ourselves. Anybody? Please assemble. Please assemble in the city of Myr, our new capital. And we will do whatever is necessary to capture Rhaegar Targaryen. Hopefully alive, or if we can arrange for a battlefield duel, I would uh, be even happier. But that is um, a long shot, I think, especially with uh, the mercenary, the small mercenary band he has. I think we will, uh, we will not have enough ticks, enough days of the battle for that to happen. But uh, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, Captain Dracoros of the Second Sons can be discouraged from uh, joining uh, conspiratorial factions. That's politely. Very good, thank you. <laughs> My vessels already hate me. Okay, fine. Can we increase any realm law? No, 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 no. About obligations. I wouldn't mind um, going for... Uh, hey, first night is legal. <laughs> I mean, 
we we haven't really used it <laughs> and i'm probably not gonna although it would be kind of a robber thing to do <laughs> Sanus has been pushed very far down the line of succession of the dragon hunt he will not be happy but paramount john of the north has inherited a tower jared has arrived at my court here he is he's dead <laughs> all righty let's hope jamie can uh can father some children uh, yeah he, he deserves it man he uh the, the soldiers of Baratheon and uh, Jamie Lannister have probably formed a very touching friendship. Now, Robert Baratheon wants to lead this war myself. Uh, we have Eddard on the left flank, Brendan on the right. Here I am, stuck in the middle with uh, Robert Warhammer. <laughs> we don't have any any named weapons. Oh, that's a shame. Let's uh, switch to war focus, can we? Almost. A few months. All right. We will, not, we will not call anybody in. We can handle this ourselves. Let's head over to... Volantis. Where's the um, Valerian Road? Is it not uh, not here? I kind of want to follow the Valerian Road. I guess it's not uh, it's not here. I guess because I think some yeah some of these provinces yeah here here it is. Um, this is the Valerian Road. I think Valerian Road. Yeah, local movement speed plus thirty percent. I guess there's no Valerian Road between Mur and Volantis. I think there should be. I think it is. Uh, it's a canon thing, but oh well, we, 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 can, we can do without a road. Where are we going? We don't need roads. Uh, oh, Lothar Frey has been excommunicated. Ah, we don't care. We don't care. You do you, man. Uh, what happened? Where's Jamie? Did, uh, did Tywin die? Is Jamie now Lord of the Westerlands? He is. Ah, man. <laughs> he left our court. He left our court to become Lord of the Westerlands. Oh well. <laughs> Maybe Tyrion wants to join us. Tyrion, my boy? Maybe. Here, have some money. Yes, Tyrion wants to join. Fantastic. He's a genius. We'll make him our... Uh, hmm, he's not that great, actually. Our uh, new spy master, maybe. Yeah, let's do that. Let's make him our, uh, our master of whisperers. He's, he's better than Howland Reed. I guess Howland Reed can become our new master at arms, maybe. John Umber? Is he a good master of arms? Not really. I mean, Brynden would be the uh, the logical choice, but I want him to be a commander. I guess we can uh, re reassign Howland Reed. Yeah, let's uh, let's do that. Howland Reed, you can be my master at arms. You a good fighter? Yeah, formidable fighter. Okay, so we will have you continue to train children in our court. Let's wait for uh, our boy Tyrion to get over here, so that we can appoint him as uh, the new uh, master of whispers. Where is he? Uh, Ter Terosi Liberation Revolt. Okay, I guess let's deal with that one first then. <laughs> what a what a what a conveniently timed revolt, man. I feel like the Valentines have, uh, have have put you up to this. Kevin Lannister demanded a trial by combat from his captor, King Sans Brethian. Lord Paramount uh, selecting Lord Paramount Jamie Lannister as his champion. Lord Paramount Jamie has slain his opponent Varys. <laughs> so this is the Varys. The 38th entry. Yeah, this is him. <laughs> okay, Jamie Lannister killed Varys in a trial by combat. This is one of the weirder things that's happened so far in this run. Okay. <laughs> but, but Kevin has been released. That's that's fine. Kevin, do you want to join me? You do? Oh, great. <laughs> Come over here, man. We uh, we lost uh, we lost a good Lannister. We can use some more good Lannisters. I accept your gracious invitation and we'll join your court forthwith. Um... Yeah. Okay, welcome, Tyrion. We will make you our Master of Whispers. Welcome. Should we marry you off to somebody? Do we have anybody? Ideally, in my court. Let's see. Nah, not really. Not really. We can marry you to maybe one of my daughters. Ah, she's only five years old. Tyrion is 21. Let's not do that. <laughs> Let's not do that. I have accepted your gracious, gracious invitation and joined your court forthwith. Welcome, Kevin Lannister. Can we... Um, hmm... I think Lothar is probably a better hand, but you might make a good Master of Coin. Should be better than uh, Master Harwood. Yeah, you're a bit better. You're a little bit of a worse steward, but you're better in almost every other way. Sure, Kevin Lannister, you can be my Master of Coin. We have two Lannisters on our, on our council now. Oh, three, three Lannisters, yeah. we have Because we also have Jerry, and he's been such a fixture in our realm. I almost forgot about, forgot about him. He's been on our council since the beginning, for a decade. It's only been a decade, eh? Very eventful episodes, this. What do you think you're doing, bro? Get down here. Uh, Eliana, you will be educated at the court. Um, 
yeah, best equipment possible. She's my eldest daughter, right? Let's get rid of this Taiwashi Liberation Revolt. So long, Aeos. Thank you. We will execute you. We are gonna execute him, because... <laughs> let's behead him. We will execute him because... Uh, uh, because he, uh, he dared to revolt against us in the middle of the war against Volantis. He's already a trained fighter, huh? Willem. Willem Fire, age 6. He's a trained fighter. Good going. I mean, he is being trained by Brynden Blackfish himself. I mean, this guy might be our own <laughs> our own Damon Blackfire in the future, but uh, we'll, we'll see about that. The Sons of the Iron Throne declared uh, the war uh, to retake the Iron Islands. That makes sense. Good luck, Stemis. Let's head down to Volantis, though. Uh, are you joining him? Freeholder of Magier, Roy Manor, whatever. Whatever. We can handle it. We can take you. Let's see, um, is this, is this guy leading any armies? Mevlis. Where is that? Up here. I guess then that's where his major army is. We want to take care of that first, right? Let's head up there. Robert, let's take, let's take out these uh, Volantine pricks. 4,000. 600? Nope. Uh, 16,000. Okay. Let's head over to this army. We want to intercept these guys. Where's Rhaegar, though? We, we should pay attention to him. Is he is he raised? Uh, we, we have him a special character, of course. Where is he? Rhaegar. Here. You are you, you uh, training troops? No. He's in Old Flanders to train troops. We, I guess he's not He's not at war with us at the moment. Uh, I've just received a very thoughtful gift from Lord Jerrion. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, my man. First big battle of the war is, up com is coming. 16,000 versus 30,000. And we are way better commanders than them, so we've got this in the back easily. We captured Lord Freeholder Mokoro of Arlior Jerome. Do you have any mo any money? Not enough. But we will ransom you off once we get the chance. Let's chase these a-holes down to Aneria. Sure. I do want to I do want to siege down Volantis itself, though. Howland Reed has been a Leon able servant, having successfully completed many tasks in aid of the Dragon Hunt. Uh, I did, I w it would be seen as the right and honorable course to reward him with certain incomes and grants so as to foster greater loyalty. I will give him uh, a Brethian heirloom. Uh, sure, we can give him... I, I have a book somewhere. I didn't I didn't remove the council uh, game. Come on. Don't do this to me. Um, I will give you the summer and winter annals. Here you go. <laughs> this will be a Robert Brethian. We don't care about these books. Um... Let him rot. Let him rot. We're fighting a war over here, man. We have no time to deal with your shit. I believe one of your vessels can be discouraged from associating with conspiratorial factions. This man. Threaten him. Accept your gracious gift for the splendid object. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Nisinea becomes fated seven. Okay, fine. That little whatever. He, f he refused to leave his faction. That's fine. But we want to head over to Volantis. This is the main... Large Volantine city, war elephant pens. So we see traders because we have old Volantis and normal Volantis. One, which one? Oh, this is the Black Wall, yeah. So we want to yeah, old Volantis, yeah. I, I, remember, I remember now. Old Volantis is the um, the sort of inner city, right? Black Wall is a great oval of fused black stone built 200 feet high <laughs> in the eastern half of Volantis, often called Old Volantis, built by the Valerian Freehold. And Valentis was no more than an outpost of the Empire. It is considered the heart of Valentis. And only scions of the old blood claim able to trace their ancestry to Valeria are allowed to dwell there. The Black Wall is so thick that six four-horse chariots can race around its top abreast, which is done annually to celebrate the founding of Valentis. No outlander, freeman, or foreigner is allowed inside the Black Wall unless they are invited by the old blood. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna put that to the test though. <laughs> You're gonna invite us once we siege your your, your, your fortress down. You better. Let's do it. Let's head over to Volantis and then to Old Volantis. We're going to siege it down. I think it's already under siege, though. I guess they're at war with other people. That's fine, though. We can uh, we can, uh, we can can still take them. Let's do it. Do we have any siege leaders? Not really. Not really. Fine. Robert will do it himself. Robert will do it himself. Where is Rhaegar, though? We should, we should check to see where he is. Rhaegar, my boy, where are you? In Old Valentis. Okay, we will seize down Old Valentis because that's also where Rhaegar is. <laughs> maybe we can capture him. I don't think so, but maybe. Uh, Whisper, my best master of whispers, Lord Tyrion Lannister, has, has expressed a desire to get married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will find you somebody nice, Tyrion. 
Let's see. We, we can marry him to one of our daughters. He's only five years old, though. So once she's 14, Tyrion will be... Uh, will be 30. Okay, that's a quite a big age gap. I do think it would be quite cool to marry Tyrion Lannister, though. Anybody else that we have for him? I guess we can marry him to one of the... One of Oberyn's daughters. Maybe they will want to marry... Uh, maybe they will want to marry uh, Tyrion. Arianne is dead. Obara is married. Now, Miria is not married. She's 19. She will be a good match for Tyrion. Let's see. No. These are the better than aggression pact. Maybe one of the other... One of the other uh, Sand Snakes. Sorella. 13-year-old. Want to marry... Tyrion? Yes. Okay. I guess she's uh, f uh, far down the line of succession. That's fine, Tyrion. You can marry... Sorella Sand, she's an attractive, quick girl, and she might prove useful at our court as well, if she wants to join us here. Alright, we're besieging Old Valentis down. Let's see how long this takes. I accept your suggestion of a betrothal between Lord Tyrion and Sorella. Great. Great, great, great. Okay, this is gonna take a while, boys. Um, he wants to fight... Renly Ratty, no, no, no. I want not I I act against Lord Paramount Renly, I don't know what you, what you think will would happen. Lord Paramount bail on the Tormentor, except that King Sanders of the Iron Throne is peace offered. Okay, he, Sanders has taken his revenge. He has uh, taken care of business. He has uh, avenged his uh, ex-wife, his uh, his former wife, and, uh, and his children. And Balon Greyjoy once again swears fealty to the Iron Throne. Good going, Sanders. We like you for that. But we have uh, some other things to do. Some other business to attend to. Uh, trial by combat. Lord Paramount bail on Greyjoy demanded the trial by combat. From his captain, Lord Paramount Jamie Lannister, selecting Victorian Greyjoy as a champion. Victorian slayed his opponent, Sir Damon Lannister. And he's free again. Okay, well, <laughs> Jamie, why didn't you fight yourself, man? You have 150 personal combat skill, you coward. Oh well. <laughs> ah, Captain, we have taken old Valentis, but Triarch Niesos Fasar is not here. Have his family put in the dungeon then. Prince Vegar of the Iron Throne is imprisoned. Holy shit. Is it only, only Prince Rhaegar? I think so. Is he fam family? Yeah, yeah, put him in put him in prison. Do we have him? Do we do we <gasps> We did it boys. We captured Rhaegar Targaryen. He's in my prison. <laughs> Can we duel him? Seize valuable artifact. Rhaegar Targaryen's army. No, we don't care. Mutilate imprisoned. Execute imprisoned. At least we will we will throw him in the dungeon, I think. Throw him in Oubliette. Yeah, let's do it. We don't care about this guy. I've gained the cruel trait. I mean, this is Rhaegar Targaryen. This is completely fair. <laughs> this was the whole reason why we went we went to war with Volantis, was to capture this guy, and we have now. Um, can we charge the rest? No, it's all level 10, I guess. We are now besieging the Black Wall. The Black Wall. The Black Wall. Okay. I guess we... Are we now in Old Volantis or not? That's a little bit of the question, I guess. Um, I think we will chase down this army first because... Well, we are already at 100%. I guess because we captured his family members. Yeah, we hold Lord... Ver we hold Vermin Vassar prisoner. That's, I guess, his son. Yeah, that's his son and heir. Okay. All right. Okay. 100%, boys. Offer peace. Prince Viserys is imprisoned. Jaehaerys Targaryen is imprisoned, and Prince Valeron of Company of the Dragon is imprisoned. Here we go, boys. Sent. Anti-Targaryen war has been won. Or do we have all Targaryens in prison now? Oh, man. Robert is so giddy right now. <laughs> We're gonna, gonna take care of these Targaryen assholes. It's, it's time. It's time to handle... To handle this. To handle them. Daenerys. Daenerys is still at large, huh? Where is she? Lord of the Red Fort. Is she in, um... Oh, you prick. <laughs> oh, you prick. He's in, she's in, um... She's in the Vale. Is she the last Targaryen who's not in my prison? I think so. Because we have, I think, four in prison. Yeah, there's five members. And we have... Jairus is in my prison. Balairon is in my prison. Rhaegar is in my prison. Daenerys is in... Viserys is in my prison. And Daenerys is at large. Okay, she escaped. She escaped my wrath. <laughs> well, we will get you yet.
than there is. It feels good to at least have a goal left for uh, old Robert. Ooh, okay. What will we do with these people, though? I, I think we will keep them in our dungeon for now. We will handle it later. Um, ideally, I want Rhaegar Targaryen to demand trial by combat, so I can... I can have... Oh! Or what if a Sarah Targaryen is complaining about the dark cells in the dungeon that he and his family are occupying? No, you, you Targaryens can stay where you are. Screw you. Stay in the dungeon for Sarah's. I believe uh, Gilonos Fassar has been in your custody for too long. This guy. I want to pay 25 gold. That's fine. That's fine. Here you go. Kosokwo uh, Fassar. Another 25 gold. Sure. <laughs> um... Ray Fassar. We, we have to be careful that we don't sell back Rhaegar Targaryen. Sure, you go. 25 gold. We will lower these troops. Oh, uh, let's just lower them this way. Do we have any more soldiers in the Dragon Hunt left? We do. Okay, great. Great, great, great. Let's go home, boys. Let's go home. And feast on Targaryen flesh. Let's go home to Myrrh. We didn't capture Volantus, by the way. I might do that later. I don't have a CB right now on them, but... Uh, my wife is pregnant again. <laughs> I guess we had a little... Victory tumble with our wife. <laughs> all right, all right. And now that we've captured these Targaryens, I'm not quite sure what to do. <laughs> what do you guys think? Is it? Can I ask you guys already? Or should I continue with this episode? No, no, no. We, we've, been, we've been recording for 40 minutes. We've we've done it, boys. We've done it. We fought a war against Valentis. We've had a impressive battle over here in uh, Latnir. We have captured. We have besieged and uh, stormed. The black walls of old Volantis. Uh, we've we've entered the inner sanctum. The um, what's it called? Old Volantis. The yeah, we 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 we've been allowed access to the black walls, although it was not really <laughs> not really uh, the intent, of course, of the Valentine to give it access. And inside the black walls, we found none other than our enemy, Rhaegar Targaryen. Here he is. He's imprisoned. His son is his sons are imprisoned, and his brother Viserys is imprisoned. Only Daenerys Targaryen yet lives. She is married to a nobody, John Redford. Uh, we might want to invite this guy over to court at some point. Maybe, maybe he will accept if we, uh, if we, if we, uh, if we are, if we, if we sway him a little bit. Yeah, let, let's sway this guy. I wanna, I wanna invite him over and get Daenerys here. <laughs> yes, we've, we've done it, boys. Let's let, let me tell, let, let me know what you guys think I should do with all these Targaryens. Should I execute them all? Should I? Um, should I maybe be merciful? Should I just 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 maybe cut their balls off only? <laughs> uh, is that is that the only thing I should do? Should I keep them in prison until they demand trial by combat? That's something that I've been thinking about as well. Although that might mean that uh, they die in my dungeon, and that would be a bit anticlimactic, I think. Let me know what you guys think. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We did the goal, the first primary goal of this uh, campaign has been done. Uh, let me also know uh, what you guys think uh, should be the next step for Robert Brathian. Should we maybe go after Pentos or Valentis? Or should we try to uh, secure the stepstones for our brother Stannis? Should we maybe even uh, swear fealty to Stannis now that we um, we have accomplished our goal? I think uh, Stannis would like that very much. And I think uh, it, it's an option we could consider, you know. Uh, we, might, uh, we might even want to depose Stannis again. We might want to become king again. Let me know what you guys think. And uh, thank you guys very much for watching. It's been pretty great to see uh, a series this popular again. Um, if you wanna, if you wanna give me uh, buy me a coffee, give me a couple bucks as a tip. There's a link in the description to my uh, Ko-Fi account. Uh, we have a Discord. It's also a link in the description. Uh, also, I wanna just highlight uh, all the portraits I've been using. Uh, most of them are by artist D'Amico. Uh, he made a ton of very nice. Uh, Song of Ice and Fire portraits, which I've been using extensively in my intro. So do uh, check out this work uh, and uh, the, the work of the other artists in the description. Uh, in the meantime, thank you guys for watching. And uh, see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.